All right, Kyle, we're live. Alex. Dude, my man. Yeah, fist bumps, fist bumps. There you go. Bumps. Welcome to the, to the signature of downtown Dallas. Man, this is, you know, listen, there's something I love. There's something I miss about Miami and Dallas. I don't spend enough time in the high-rise part of uh-huh. the downtown Dallas part. And this is absolutely spectacular. Uh, Kyle, why don't you let the group, before I get into the intro, where are we shooting from right now? Uh, we are at 2222 Worthington Street. It's a four-story townhouse with a rooftop deck that's in the State Thomas area of Uptown. You are literally walking distance from any amenity that you need, from the finest restaurants and retail to the finest hotels and civic centers that uh, the city of Dallas has to offer. And what we'll do is we'll include a link on this property because this is the first time I've shot in a home in Dallas that's overlooking the city like this. This is absolutely spectacular. Yeah, everything, like I said, Alex, this is for somebody that wants to be part of the signature of downtown Dallas. There you go. All right, so let's get started. Hello, everybody. My name is Alex Vidal. I am the regional vice president for Cobalt Banker here in Dallas-Fort Worth. And today we're sitting with one of North Dallas's top producers, Kyle Ravinsky. I thought I had a lot when I had twins, but he's got triplet and triplet <laughs> boys. Uh, and we're going to try to beat the weather. It's cold and it's rainy today. Uh, so hopefully we don't get rained on like my interview with Jules Trump. Oh, my gosh. Uh, so here we go. You ready, Kyle? I'm ready. All right. So, Kyle, you went from, and by the way, I told you that's one of my son's names, right? Uh-huh, uh-huh, that, uh-huh. Right? So news producer in the real estate. Correct. To one of the top producers. Yes. Talk to us about a little bit about that story. Well, um, I'm born and raised Dallas. Lived here all my life. Uh, I've lived my entire life within... 300 miles of the hospital where I was born. Wow. And so one of the adjectives when people ask me to describe myself, it's Dallasite. I'm from Dallas. Yeah. Both of my parents born and raised in Dallas. All four of my grandparents born and raised in Dallas. So if there's one thing I know, it's the city of Dallas. It's uh, I tell people all the time, I joke, I'm not Christopher Columbus. I've never gone and <laughs> discovered new lands. But where I live, I know it better than anybody. There you go. All right, so Kyle, 16 years in the business, Mm -hmm. you do very large numbers, right? What was it like, and and we did not rehearse this, and we kind of talked about it, do we prep the questions in advance or not? We're like, we're gonna ad-lib this and wing it. What was it like in the beginning? Were you always, I mean, you do multi-million dollar property, so were you always doing multi-million dollar property? Absolutely not. You start, you, you, you take any opportunity you can get, and as a matter of fact, 16 years in the business, and I still will take any opportunity I can get. What's important is my clients, not the dollar amounts. Okay. It's every client gets treated the same with the highest level of care and respect. Um, when I started uh, my business, it took me about 90 days to start cash flowing. And I would go on days like today, I'd go in the rain and I would knock on the doors of for sale by owners and say, hey, I'm just here to preview your house. I'm representing some buyers. The subliminal message that it would give to a for sale by owner prospect is, hey, here's a hardworking guy who's out in miserable weather, and he comes to knock on my door. He doesn't even know if I'm here or not. And in the first two years I was working in real estate, I think I picked up five listings just from door knocking in bad weather. Okay, so I didn't know that about you, and I mm-hmm. love that. The very first time I went door knocking, like legit door knocking mm-hmm. a farm area, it had just rained. It's in Miami. The steam, <laughs> the sun came out, and the steam was coming off the floor. Sure. And rather than staying in my car, I knew people would respect it more. Yeah, yeah. I always it. thought they, they liked So the average for sale by owner doesn't think a realtor works hard. They think they're just there to collect easy money. Sure. And I'm still waiting for that easy money. Yeah. I've been working 16 years. I've never seen an easy dollar in this business. But once they see how hard working you are, and then I would even offer, I'd say, look, I know you're for sale by owner, but if you want to hold an open house, I'd be happy to hold a professional open house for you. And it just plants the seed in their mind. And then what would happen is four or five weeks later, I'd get a phone call, Kyle, I'm sick of this. People say one thing and do another. I'm tired of the frustration. Will you just take it over for me? Interesting. Yeah. yeah. So what are the, being in the business 16 years, what are things that you were doing back then that you're still doing today? Uh, I'm still picking up the phone and smiling and dialing. Yeah. I call in, and now it's funny because I call into farm areas. I have uh, phone lists for neighborhoods, mm-hmm. and I try to time it so I'm calling every address at least once every two or three months. Hey, it's just your friendly neighborhood realtor, Kyle Ravinsky. I'm just calling to see how things are going. Kyle, I told you last time I'm not interested in selling. I know you're not, 
but that one time I'm going to call you and you're going to say, I'm glad you did. Yeah. So it's just a matter of making time to do the right prospecting and make sure people know that you are out and about and that you're successful in their neighborhoods. What I loved about it, when you were saying that, the smile, and I hope the camera's close enough so they can see the <laughs> smile, because you got to have fun with it, right? Oh, absolutely. When you're so legit and scripted, yeah. like it doesn't come across genuine. And at the very beginning, I used to get frustrated because when you're, co- when you're making the phone calls and the people on the other end aren't receptive, it doesn't take a lot for you to get down on yourself. But I use a lot of sports analogies in the business. Yeah. Remember uh, Reggie Jackson, who was one of the best baseball players in history? He failed seven out of ten times when he was at the plate. But the fact that he got hits three out of ten times puts him in the Hall of Fame. That's right. With me. And today makes you millions of dollars. Exactly. <laughs> Hundreds of millions of dollars. If I get three people to talk to me over a hundred phone calls, yeah. it's wildly successful. That's right. So that's all you got to keep are you, in perspective. So interesting. On, on the people that you're calling, it's just in your farm area? Correct. Nothing, no specific agenda? Well, when you say farm area... I think I right now I have about 14 different farm areas in the in the last 24 months I've executed transactions in 31 different zip codes wow. and uh, every time I uh, list and sell a property I add that to my farm area I'm sending mailers out and then I'm trying to make phone calls into those neighborhoods as well once at once a quarter at well, a minimum at least once a quarter so how many 14 farm okay so this is this is fascinating mm-hmm. how many homes are you t- are you talking um about? I think if I mailed out every address with a mailer I think it's about 2100 addresses in all represented okay. in all of the farm areas Got it. Yeah. How and then will- of those 2100 I might have 1,400 working phone calls. I mean, phone numbers. Got it. Yeah. And so how many, so you're following once a quarter on the phone mm-hmm. call. What about mailers? How many mailers? Are you uh, at least, I mail every address at least once a month. And I'm trying to figure out, my, my grandfather was an old school dry goods retailer. Okay. And he used to tell me one of his favorite uh, sayings was, boy, you can't advertise for Christmas in August. Meaning if somebody receives the message, but they're not in the mindset to buy or sell for Christmas, the message is wasted. And so it's the same kind of thing with me when I'm dealing with real estate, trying to look at the bell curves for the calendar year and figure out when people are thinking about selling and when they're not thinking about selling. And maybe I'd be better off sending three mailers in March once a week and not sending any mailers in December or January. But these years have been so crazy and every month is a busy month that's right so you i I might have to raise my advertising budget to send out more mailers that's right well yeah and i think do you do video to piggyback the mailers i do i do so with me there are five or six different vehicles of marketing and everything operates as spokes in a wheel i have my website i have my mailers i make my phone calls i do social media I do uh, print advertising, newspaper, luxury magazine, and I feel like what I want is somebody to get my name word of mouth, then they receive my mailer, then they might see me in D Magazine. Uh, Colwell Banker does an excellent job in supporting my business to make sure that I'm visible. And once somebody sees my name from two or three different sources, then all of a sudden I have credibility in the marketplace. Amen to that. Mm-hmm. He does do a lot of video. And by the way, D Magazine is like the magazine in Dallas oh, yeah, for, 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 the, for the non for the <laughs> non right. I um, forget this is going no, it's, elsewhere. It's going yeah. elsewhere too. And and Kyle has consistently ranked as one of the top realtors. D Magazine does ranking every year. He's consistently ranked across uh, across the board. I don't want to break my arm, uh, patting myself on the back, but yeah. I think I have 14 consecutive years as the best realtor on the best realtors list. And I think I have eight consecutive years on the top producer list. Yeah. So, so the best realtor list is a subjective list. You just need to have clients who Nominate. respond to the survey. But the top producers, they go into the sales records and they say, okay, who are the top 100 sure. or 150 realtors in the area MLS? And you can't lie about that. Yeah. What, I, what I love about the, the different, you know, the, the spokes in the wheel kind of concept mm-hmm. is, 
you know, you got to do it, right? Somebody, if they're, if they're, I joke, if they're on the toilet at 7 a.m., they're going to see your video on Facebook. Mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. we'll go to bed tonight and I'll wake up with a thousand more views. Wow. Tomorrow, right? Wow. Yeah. Just because people are looking at all times sure. of day. Um, but in postcards are great, but they don't transmit your personality, your energy, your vibe. Yeah. But if they get it and then all of a sudden they see you on Facebook or mm -hmm. Instagram and your energy and your vibe. And I've sent it, uh, send postcards more than sending letters because I find sometimes people get the letter and they don't even open it. Right. At least with the postcard, you have two seconds to cross their eyeballs as they're putting it in the garbage. Interesting. And okay, then I if like they that. see your name and they see your face, eventually, okay. when you know, just like... It's Coke. like the raindrops we're feeling right now. It's the... And then finally, hopefully, we'll have a good enough sense to go back inside. Uh, um, what I was going to say was Coca-Cola is the largest advertiser in the world. They've been doing it for 150 years. Yeah. So you can never stop. And their concept is, hopefully, somebody sees our ad when they're thirsty. And that's what I'm doing also, is hopefully somebody sees my ad I when they're that. looking to sell. Okay. So let's talk about luxury. At what point did you break into, let's say, the million dollar plus range, and what did you do to, to break into that? Um, I had a referral where somebody called me that was representing a home builder. This was back in 2010 when the market was in the absolute crater. Yeah, I was going to say, great, great time. <laughs> yeah, so they were holding three new construction luxury properties in Preston Hollow. And uh, first and foremost, I'm a numbers guy. I dive into the numbers. I see what the uh, prices are. I see what the conditions of the properties are. And very no nonsense. I don't blow a lot of smoke about, oh, you have the most beautiful curtains I've ever seen. Yeah. Or, oh, this autumn is wonderful. I'm like, this is what the market is now. And these is, this is what these properties will sell for. And the other joke I say is, I'm not always right, but I'm always right. Yeah. Um, so anyhow, this gentleman comes to me. I'm giving him the presentation. And he says, look, let's cut to the chase. All three of these addresses give me a price for each house that will sell the house in 30 days. They had been on the market for over a year. And so I gave him the prices and he said, I'm going to give you all three listings for 30 days. And I ran the table <laughs> and sold all three of them. And he was a great advocate for me in the marketplace. And he's like, look, you can go for style, you can go for charm, you can go for beauty. But if you want a guy that's going to sell your house, it's Kyle. Got it. So what do you do when it comes to luxury marketing, right? Talk mm -hmm. to me about some of the, the feathers in your cap that you do for, for luxury properties. Um, I hold a lot of open houses. I am old. For luxury. For luxury. I will, uh, with my client's permission, uh, I have high levels of security. I have high levels of protection in the properties. And then a lot of times I get luxury properties that are vacant. And those are the ones that are easy uh, to hold open. So I'm constantly out there pressing palms. I'm uh, out there making phone calls. So I have open house lists in luxury neighborhoods that probably have 150, 200 names of prospects who are either immediately looking or always looking. Yeah. And I just start with the A's and finish with the Z's. I'm making phone calls. And then I always have the requisite support, luxury magazines, glossy print. Uh, again, Colwell Banker has a vehicle where uh, my listings appear in the magazine. The first month that they're listed, they're always in the luxury magazine. Um, and I do a lot of social media uh, yeah. posting for my properties. And... Uh, the key is I'm always available when my phone rings. Okay. So let's talk about last two questions. If you can go back and talk to the Kyle of 16 years ago, mm -hmm. what's the one, like we got, we got agents from all different levels, right? What's the one piece of advice you'd give the new agent, mm -hmm. Kyle, getting into the business that you wish you would have done differently? Um, be available for your clients. Uh, be prepared to work seven days. You know, like, like, my wife and I talk all the time. She's like, you're always available. And uh, <laughs> my wife I, is watching this. Yeah. <laughs> she'll say the same thing. And I say, it's not like I'm digging ditches. And most of the time I'm dealing with friends or uh, referrals from friends that I want, you know, that will become my friends. And it's easy, but, you know, it can be time consuming. God bless my wife for understanding when I need to take time away but she knows that part of the lifestyle that I provide is by being available to my clients so I would tell the rookie agent I'd say be prepared and then also 
pay your taxes, yeah. <laughs> save your money because you're going to come in. I remember the first year I worked in real estate and the first time I got a check for a luxury property that was equivalent to what I made a year when I worked in television. Yeah. And it's just, it, it comes and goes and just, you know, just be sure to pay your taxes. You <laughs> Last question. We end every interview or most interviews with the exception of one. I forgot to ask uh, book podcast or TED Talk recommendation for the audience? Um, uh, the last book I read was uh, Empire of the Summer Moon. It was about the Cherokee Nation okay. in uh, Texas and uh, a famous uh, Native American, Quanah Parker. And uh, it was really a lot of Texana in the history of Texas as you move west from Fort Worth into the frontier in uh, the mid 19th century. It was an amazing book. It had some great uh, leadership points in there and I really enjoyed it. I haven't gotten too big on the podcasts yet. Yeah. People have recommended several to me. It's just I'm always on the phone. Yeah, I and I'm always trying to talk to somebody that I don't really have a lot of downtime to do, to do that. Actually, I lied. Last question. So I, okay. hear, I, I hear you're a big cook. Do you have a smoker? I do have a smoker. So what's your favorite thing to smoke? Uh, I like to smoke ribs. Uh, I smoke brisket. Uh, my wife has gotten into smoking fruit. She'll cut peaches in half or a pineapple in half and put it on the smoker, and it's amazing. Really? Yeah, so if you ever get a chance and you have a wild hair, think about doing that. There you the go. big, heavy, pitted fruits uh, work great. Awesome. Kyle, thanks so much. I'm going to go and turn the camera off. Any parting words for the audience? Before uh, I, uh, not really. Just if you're looking to buy or sell, I'm always available, and I'm always free with the information. If you have any questions, give me a shout. There you go. Mm-hmm.